Thirty. Dead son. The clash of the titans for image reconstruction. NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling versus checkerboard rendering as often found on Sony's PlayStation 4 Pro console. We have been impressed by the results of checkerboard rendering on the PS4 Pro to give images rendered at a lower resolution the appearance of rendering at a higher resolution. And the one implementation that impressed us perhaps the most is that found in Decima Engine powering Horizon Zero Dawn and Death Stranding on PS4 Pro. On the PC side, image reconstruction and checkerboard rendering has been in a number of games here, but the 2.0 version of deep learning super sampling from NVIDIA has impressed us the most. So how do these two juggernauts compare and which one comes out on top? Now before we go into the details of the comparison between these two techniques in Death Stranding, it is good to explain the differences between DLSS and checkerboarding. Checkerboard rendering as found in Death Stranding is non-standard and does not follow the same standard method as found in other PS4 Pro games. It does not utilize the specialized hardware found in the PlayStation 4 Pro to help accelerate or speed up certain aspects of checkerboard rendering. Instead, it looks to be more software driven, running in a generalized way where the screen is rendered in the alternating checkerboard resolution of 1920 by 2160 in one frame and then the missing spaces are rendered in the preceding frame. Importantly, Decima's engine also does not sample a pixel from its center, but from its corners over two frames. By combining these results over time in a specialized way that's similar to the game's temporal anti-aliasing, and with a very unique pass of FXAA, that internal lower resolution that's sparsely rendered of 1920 by 2160 is filled into a 4K pixel grid and has a perceptual resolution that is higher. Due to the specific constraints of getting the game to run at 30 FPS on PS4 Pro with checkerboarding, there is a knock-on effect in this engine of it producing a softer image that still preserves detail though, which is something that the dev team wanted anyway. The cost of rendering the entire checkerboarding resolved on the PlayStation 4 Pro is a little bit over 1.8 milliseconds. Deep learning super sampling works rather differently. It is not sparsely rendered, so there is not this concept of hole filling for pixels that are missing. Rather, it works more like accumulation temporal anti-aliasing, where multiple frames from the past are queued up, and information from these frames are used to smooth lines and add detail into an image. But instead of doing that detail and image smoothing at the real internal resolution like normal TAA, it does it at a much larger output resolution. As a part of these frames from the past, motion vectors are also used, and these describe the motion of pixels and objects on the screen and are integral for DLSS 2.0 to work properly. The internal resolution of DLSS is smaller than that in checkerboard rendering. In Death Stranding for 4K, the internal resolution can either be 2560 by 1440 in quality mode or 1920 by 1080 in performance mode. So checkerboard rendering uses half the pixels of 4K in total, while DLSS can use around 44% or 25% of the total pixels. So DLSS is starting from a lower resolution, meaning it has a more challenging starting position than checkerboard rendering, which has more real pixels per frame. As a part of the reconstruction to 4K in DLSS, the previous frames from the past are integrated with the current one based upon metrics that are decided by an AI program running on the GPU and running on the tensor cores as found in Turing GPUs. So while DLSS has less pixels to start from, it has a vast amount of compute power to help the reconstruction process. On an RTX 2080 Ti at 4K, this extra compute time on the Turing cores is 1.507 milliseconds. On an RTX 2060, it is higher than 2.5 milliseconds. So DLSS can be cheaper on the biggest RTX GPU and a millisecond more expensive on the smallest RTX GPU than checkerboarding is on the PS4 Pro. This usage of hardware in the GPU makes this comparison a bit lopsided. The compute power utilized for DLSS is many more times than that which the PS4 Pro GPU can even muster. Even the smallest RTX 2060 GPU has around two times more machine learning performance than the Xbox Series X GPU. So with DLSS, we're not just looking at a software difference as it is a technique enabled by the excess of hardware power. This is something we need to keep in the back of our minds throughout this video as DLSS is not standing on even ground with checkerboarding, but still it is fascinating to see what the differences are. So let's take a look 
right at the particulars between DLSS in quality mode at 1440p internally compared to checkerboard rendering starting with image detail. And here image detail means how much unique information is packed into an image. A more perfect reconstruction of a perfect 4K image will have more individual detail visible in it or more per pixel information visible in it. So let's look at the shot here outside the cave in the prolog first on PS4 Pro. If we zoom into that shot and look at the moss on the ground closely, we can see that there's some tiny semi-transparent detail here with elements that are pixel sized or smaller. So now let's look at that same image, but with DLSS in quality mode. I think the first thing that is noticeable overall here is the difference in the level of sharpness of the detail present versus that checkerboard image. There's a higher contrast here between the individual bits of moss. That is not a post-processing difference though, necessarily. As we get closer, upon inspection, you can see that it is largely as a result of more real detail being produced in the DLSS image. If you look up close up at those individual stalks of moss on the ground in checkerboarding, you can see that they have this blurred together look. If you switch over to DLSS in quality mode, you can see how those tiny bits of moss are de-blurred almost and look like individual pieces. And smaller bits of moss that are pixel sized are now resolved into the image, whereas the checkerboard image does not capture the detail that is pixel sized always necessarily, as it's kind of smoothed over or not reconstructed. Looking at other semi-transparent detail, we can see similar behavior. So let's look at the game's hair rendering. Here looking at fragile with checkerboard rendering, if we look at her eyebrow hair or her hair on her head, we can see that the checkerboard rendering seems to reconstruct the hair with an almost checkerboarded look inside of it, where there are gaps of not filled in information for the hair. Hence why you can see lines of hair looking incomplete. In motion, this means that there's a lot of aliasing within the hair itself, which manifests as flickering in the hair. If we go over to DLSS in quality mode for that same instant, eyebrow hair is no longer having those gaps in it, giving it that salt and peppered look that we saw with checkerboarding. Looking into her hair, we can see how lines are completed there, and the primary aliasing is much reduced. In motion, this means that DLSS in quality mode has decidedly less flickering than the checkerboard image. If we go over to DLSS in performance mode, running internally at 1080p, next to checkerboard rendering, we can see that even the internal 1080p image does a fair better job at completing these hair details, these transparent details, than checkerboard rendering, which utilizes a lot more real pixels than DLSS in performance mode, actually. This is for small semi-transparent detail that is pixel sized or smaller. So let's look at larger opaque detail, starting with the first time you get control over Sam after he crashes his bike. If we stop that image with checkerboard rendering on PS4 Pro and zoom into his backpack, we can see all the tiny little text on the decals there. With checkerboard rendering, the individual letters and graphical details of this decal are a bit blurred over, where lines lack hard edges, so their legibility is compromised. And if we switch over to DLSS in quality mode here, we can see that quality mode has the text be much more legible as the hard edges between the text elements and graphical elements is reconstructed so they do not blur into one another. Now I imagine some people in the audience here might be saying this is a difference of sharpening or a sharpening filter, but to test that we can look at the image with native 4K as well. As you can see with native 4K and TAA, it likewise reproduces the text and graphics in these decals with hard edges where they are legible and distinct elements on their own, much like they are in DLSS in quality mode. If you were to just add post-process sharpening to the checkerboard image, you can see how purely sharpening an image does not make text or graphical elements more legible. Much like in the scenario with the hair, if we switch over to performance mode here for DLSS, we can see how that produces an image which is likewise filled with hard lined edges and the decal on the backpack is much more readable than we can see in checkerboard rendering. As part of this image, you might have noticed as well that there's a difference in the way the reflection highlight on the backpack material is handled between DLSS and checkerboard rendering. In the checkerboard image, you can see large block aliased edges on the highlight on the backpack itself. This makes the beveled edge of detail in the backpack look incomplete. In motion, this would mean ever-changing aliasing and flicker. If we look at that same beveled edge in DLSS, we can see that the edge line on the backpack is properly completed and properly anti-aliased. In motion, this means that the image in DLSS has far less flickering on the backpack 
while the detail itself also manages to stay sharp. A big component of reconstructing detail is making sure that the detail is constant between frames. If detail reconstructed is changing between frames and is unstable, you can get pixel flickering, crawling and popping, so aliasing, it's that jaggy look that we see in games. This is the primary difference beyond increasing detail being the first thing visible with DLSS. Checkerboard rendering in general in this game on PS4 Pro has an unstable resolve in comparison. So that detail in the distance that is either small or bright will flicker and pop in and out of existence between frames. This is aliasing over time between frames essentially. If we look at that same shot with the PS4 Pro quality settings on PC but with DLSS in quality mode, we can see how that detail into the distance when moving the camera remains coherent and sharp but does not have detail disappearing or flickering in and out of existence. To show this a bit better, I lined up Sam along this riverbed here and walked him along in both versions of the game, one with the LSS and one with checkerboard rendering. His movement pattern is a bit erratic and different each time, so they do not line up perfectly. But if you place that same feed side by side of him moving with checkerboard rendering or him moving with the LSS, you can see the difference in overall image stability over time if you look at the rocks on the foreground or the buildings in the background. On PS4 Pro, these elements of the screen either shimmer or ripple or flicker, while in DLSS, they are primarily static and stable. I'm zooming into the image here for demonstration purposes. This image with its flickering or rippling as you might see on the PS4 Pro version is a macro effect for the entire image. So you can actually see the shimmering as a whole without paying attention to the individual parts. This happens for any highly detailed or highly reflective image detail. Like in this scene here where Fragile turns to Sam as he almost hits her on the bike. If you look at her jacket with checkerboard rendering on, you can see how the highly reflective detail on her jacket flickers in motion. It's subtle though, I would say. With DLSS in quality mode, it smooths that over without any flickering while keeping the detail level high. Even DLSS in performance mode manages to have less flicker overall here than checkerboard rendering. So in terms of detail for transparencies, I think DLSS comes out on top here. And the same can be said for opaque detail and its stability in motion, where DLSS looks to produce a more stable image that doesn't break apart on motion. The detail is consistent over time. But like everything in life, there's a catch here, I think. DLSS does have specific image quality faults in Death Stranding. Like, let's look here. DLSS does not suffer from full frame ghosting like you can see in the game's TAA, or which is also slightly present in the checkerboard rendering, but it does suffer from what I would call particle trails from certain objects. This is most noticeable on either very distant objects that are heavily contrasted against the background, so something like this scene here where the sky is overhead and there's this rail above. When in DLSS quality mode, you can see that this rail ahead flushed against the sky produces a small trail of particles almost behind it as it moves forward. Checkerboard rendering, on the other hand, does not have this problem at all. You can also see the same effect on the crypto biotes that the game has as they float up into the sky. With DLSS on, they leave this trailing look behind them from that almost looks like particles, like a streak of sorts. This does not happen with DLSS off. If I were to take a guess as to why this happens, I would imagine it is because certain elements of the game engine do not produce motion vectors something which is confirmed when you look at Guerrilla Games' presentation about checkerboard rendering in Horizon Zero Dawn. So this is just a guess, but perhaps objects far into the distance do not produce reliable motion vectors, nor do certain particle types, like maybe what crypto biotes are made of. Either way, it's a particle trail look to these objects in the world, and it is a concession that is made while DLSS is activated. In the end here, I think the conclusion that can be drawn is that DLSS in general is better at producing more stable, detailed images than checkerboard rendering. It is doing this while utilizing 1440p as an internal resolution 
and honestly it looks better in a lot of ways even at 1080p as an internal resolution in performance mode. So it produces better anti-aliased edges and detail than checkerboard rendering even though it's at a lower resolution. But not everything's perfect of course. First of all, checkerboard rendering does not require the GPU die space for tensor cores to run. DLSS does. So checkerboard rendering is more generalizable to many other types of GPU architectures or older GPUs, and it's theoretically cheaper. Likewise, DLSS's greater image stability and detail can have a specific cost for the game world elements like the crypto bios, which have this odd particle trail trailing behind them. DLSS really needs high quality motion vectors to function properly. And this is something that NVIDIA engineers have said themselves in presentations. Just like checkerboard rendering, DLSS is not a solution that you can just slap on and expect to work. It needs to have the engine be tuned to work properly with it. Nonetheless, the quality when it works, as it should, is a great step up from checkerboard rendering here. And with more training, it will reach even more perfect levels of reconstruction. We're probably looking at the future of image reconstruction here with DLSS 2.0. Currently the future on PC at least. As we know right now, only the Xbox Series X supports enhanced compute units, which multiply the rate of machine to learn instructions like int8 and int4. Sony has been silent on this front whether or not their GPU supports this. While DLSS 2.0 will take more than 2.5 milliseconds on an RTX 2060, it would take theoretically more than 5 milliseconds most likely on an Xbox Series X GPU. 5 milliseconds is indeed more expensive but it is also still very useful for image reconstruction as the actual cost of rendering a real 4K versus 1080p or 1440p would be a greater difference than just 5 milliseconds, especially if something like ray tracing is in use. With that in mind, I would imagine that there are also other types of quality compromises and performance optimizations that are still possible with an algorithm like this one, a machine to learn reconstruction, and perhaps developers on consoles that support accelerated machine learning could lower the cost of such a technique for lower end hardware. In the end, my opinion is not the most important one. Rather, it's that of the user. So you and the audience, which of these techniques do you think produced better images in this video? DLSS or checkerboarding? Tell me what you think in a comment below. And after that, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts the video. If you want to see more deep dive content like this, consider supporting us on Patreon to help us out and get years worth of Digital Foundry content available in high quality for download. If you want to talk to me more in depth about DLSS or checkerboarding, follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.